She just wrote this story about two horrible people that fall in love. And maybe that's what she wanted to do. Maybe she doesn't like her characters either. I don't know, Trisha. I would love, I would love for you to explain. Okay. Hi guys. Typically when I make videos for this channel, I try and talk about as many books as possible. I try to keep you here for days hearing me talk about books. But today we're just talking about one. One little book, a standalone, honestly, highlight of the year, an exaggeration, but it was so ridiculous that I want to have a video especially for it just so we can talk about it because when I mentioned that I found it ridiculous, I got a lot of feedback saying that, yeah, it was, and I haven't heard, granted, I didn't look up other people's reviews. The only things that I've seen about it um, have been people hyping it up saying that you have to read it people were telling me that I had to read it And I haven't heard anyone be like what the hell is this book? So I'll do it. I want to know what the hell is this book? So we're gonna talk about it and it is the shadows between us So I want to start off by saying that this is definitely not going to be a book rant. I'm not raging I'm not trying to cancel this book. I think that the author had a very fun time writing it. I could feel, what's her name, Trisha. I could feel Trisha having a good time, which is great for her. Second of all, it was so, I'm gonna keep using the word ridiculous, but it was just so ridiculous that even though it had so many elements that I was just like, this is not good. I had a good time. Like I mentioned it a couple times in my other vlogs that I was reading this book and I was just cracking up like literally laughing out loud at points when I don't think you're supposed to because it was just I hated every single character the things that they were doing like it got to the point where even if everybody dies at the end I wouldn't have cared um and so it was kind of it was just it was a wild ride and it was <sighs> let's just talk let's just talk about the book the shadows between us let's jump in i want to start off with the main theme of this book which is very very obvious i'm not going to put words into to trisha's mouth but it felt like this was trying to be a leaning towards feminist novel certainly not intersectional feminism but there was like they were feminist themes and the main theme of that being sexual liberation for women because in the society that this book takes place in, um, it's very archaic where it has to go in order, like the eldest sister has to be married before the second sister can even socialize. Women definitely have to be virgins before they get married and they probably shouldn't even be kissing anybody before they get married. So on and so forth. It's like a super patriarchy. It is what it is. And so throughout the book, it is made very, very clear. This is Trisha's manifesto that women should have lots of partners and they don't need to love anybody. Sometimes it's just a physical thing. Girls gotta have sex is what the book is about. And so the plot of the book is, okay, wait, I'm actually gonna figure out this girl's name because I feel really bad for not knowing. Oh, Alessandra. I had a friend in middle school named Alessandra. How could I not remember that that was her name? Anyway, so Alessandra is the second born sister so she has been just like waiting for her eldest sister to get engaged and go off and be married so that she's allowed to socialize but alessandra doesn't care about that and so anytime her father is doing business she finds a way to meet up with a son of one of the business people and oh actually no i should start this over the very first sentence so this isn't a spoiler in any way we learn that our girl Alessandra got her heart broken and she was in love with this guy named Hector and Hector said, you know, this has been fun, but I'm done. And she stabs him, kills him, and buries him in the woods. <laughs> so that's how we meet our girl Alessandra. And so since then she has realized that love is stupid. I don't believe in it. So she's had a lot of physical relationships. She gets a lot of trinkets from them. Um, and then once they propose to her, she's like, the door is that way. <laughs> like, I'm not settling down. I want no part of this. Please go away. She kind of like blackmails them because she's definitely not supposed to be sleeping with this many men. Um, and so she basically just like has stuff on them. So if they ever turn around and be like, she's not a virgin, she can ruin their lives as well. So um, 
that's that's our girl that's the gist of our main character and so now that her sister has been engaged she is ready to go out on the town and her dad is pretty serious about getting her to marry somebody rich um because he's practically bankrupt and so he thinks he's got it all set up he's like all right we got this rich dude for you let's go get you married and Alessandra is like, Daddy, no, I'm going to marry the king. And so this, I just realized, doesn't make any sense. Knowing what I now know about the prince or the king, why is he holding all of these balls? Anyway, in this world, the king, the shadow king, holds all of these balls where he will meet any eligible bachelorette and hopefully find a wife. Alessandra decides to go and this is where we learn that Alessandra is not like other girls. That is probably the second theme of this book is that she is 100% not like any other girl, not like any other human being on earth. She is so unique and that is what entices the king. So basically they're all supposed to like get in line to meet the king and she's like no I'm just gonna go dance and she basically like flat out ignores the king the whole night and so then he's super intrigued and invites her back to live at his court. So that's how it happens. So she does go and move to the court and she slowly learns about court life and kind of the secret behind the Shadow King because the Shadow King has powers that basically like encompass him in shadows all the time. And there's this weird rule that they're not, he, nobody is allowed to touch him and she wants to figure out why because oh this is the kicker i forgot to mention this part this isn't a spoiler she is going to kill the king because she wants to be queen because she's not like the other girls she is going to seduce the king marry him and poison him and the reason that this story is ridiculous if you couldn't already tell from the plot the characters are all so horrible like i hate alessandra if the alessandra i know from middle school is watching i don't hate you there's no redeeming quality about her she's like not a nice person it seems like even to the people that she befriends she kind of is always in the back of her mind being like this girl like god she's so annoying like one of her closest friends is really insecure and so she just copies everything alessandra's clothes she wants to copy anything that's trendy she has like no shame in just like straight up copying people and Alessandra's always like oh man this girl like Hesitia or whatever her name is like oh my god so annoying the shadow king I'm gonna get into it but like his politics man he doesn't get my vote um and then all the other people like there's not a single character no there's not a single character that I liked and I rooted for and I wanted happiness for except for the dog um honestly so there's that. But I also kind of wonder if that's a little bit of the point in this book is that characters don't have to be good and bad, black and white, etc. Like she just wrote this story about two horrible people that fall in love and maybe that's what she wanted to do. Maybe she doesn't like her characters either. I don't know Trisha. I would love, I would love for you to explain. And so that brings me to their politics and just the, oh, I, I don't want to keep saying ridiculous. There's a hair hanging from my plant. Is that on screen? I know that I'm overusing the word ridiculous, but they're like the politics. Let's just dive into it. The monarchy. So first of all, I mean, we're reading a fantasy, so monarchies are usually a thing, but they're kind of problematic anyway. Like we don't love nepotism um, on this channel, but specifically this guy is just so bad. So the king is kind of super busy, and so he can't really hang out with Alessandra that much, which is a problem for her because she wants to seduce him and kill him. The reason that he's so busy is because his kingdom has two major problems. Number one, the country that he just conquered isn't happy about being conquered by foreign power and having all of their government taken out and replaced by, you know, they didn't like to be conquered. They're sad. And so that's his big issue is how to make his, pe his new people not sad. Number two is that there is a Robin Hood character. There is a guy who steals from the wealthy and gives to the poor. And that's a huge issue 
because we need to protect the wealthy people and the like that's a that's genuinely a huge plot point is like how do we stop this horrible man from giving money to the peasants how do we protect our really wealthy people they're so scared like that is genuinely it's a giant plot point and i just don't understand why there wasn't a single character that chimed in and was like maybe we should do something to help the peasants so that they don't have someone who has to resort to stealing in order to like give them money so that they can feed themselves you know like nobody nobody came up with that one but alessandra our girl another thing that just makes her not like the other girls this is someone who has not really left her household she she wasn't really allowed to socialize except for like the random people who passed through her you know estate she has not seen the world she has no business experience no life experience she waltzes in first of all the king decides that he's going to tell all these state secrets to this girl that he has just met um which is yeah uh -huh. but second of all she comes up with these ideas that apparently the entire advisory council to this king could not come up with and she solves both problems and like saves the kingdoms and also her problem solving for robin hood is literally like let's screw with the peasants like if any of the peasants get any of this money we're gonna bring them in and torture them until they tell us who robin hood is that was her solution and the king was like yes why did anyone else think of that let's roll out that plan right now and they did and there's even a part in the novel where law enforcement rounds up the peasants like alessandra wants and some of them resisted and so some of them were killed by law enforcement and alessandra's like she's kind of like oh are you mad at me and he's like oh no you know they shouldn't have resisted we don't like this king and potentially new queen we don't like them that much so that was more tied to real life like i'm actually really pissed about the politics in this book it was horrible and nasty and i didn't like that there was no commentary about how they were problematic but to just go more on the fun ridiculous side of it is the whole issue of the no touchy rule alessandra's having a really hard time because she is used to having a pretty consistent sex partner and all of a sudden she's in a situation where she is not allowed to physically touch someone and she goes for about a month and she's like shaky like she's dying because she can't touch this guy and the reason that nobody can touch the king is because if somebody touches him his shadows stop working around them it's kind of like when you hook your airpod up to bluetooth and like it remembers your device um basically if he's close to a person who has ever physically touched him his powers don't work and that's bad so um he has had sexual relations before because that was brought up but um he paid the women handsomely and sent them very 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 far away so that they don't mess with his power um, but anyway, he's very serious about not being touched by this girl. Also, they're both 19. I think she might be 18, but they're both supposed to be like teenagers. And so they're having these deep conversations about like immortality and like, can you live forever without being physically touched? And blah, blah, blah. And um, he decides at the age of 19, after, you know, being with a girl for a couple months, that she's the love of his life and that he's going to give up his, his immortality for her. And just because he wants to kiss her like it's just it was just everything about this story was just so silly so that i was just laughing the entire time and my last little piece of this isn't even a thing that's worth mentioning but when i say that i think the author had a lot of fun writing it it's very obvious in her many 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 paragraphs devoted to clothing <laughs> and how people look um she the main character makes all of her own clothes and like her clothes are a very important piece of self-expression for her she sets all the trends she wears pants she's groundbreaking she's not like the other girls and so the author goes really into detail about every single outfit every single outfit 
that Alessandra wears along with a lot of the other characters. So um, that's what I mean, but I, I genuinely think that she had fun writing it. She wrote a book that she wanted to write and that's great for her. Um, but for me, it was just reading it, I was like, why? I would hate to live in this kingdom, like to know that the people at the top who are making the decisions about my life are these people. I would be so pissed. But his his goal in life is to conquer the entire world. He already has like six kingdoms under his belt. He wants to conquer the entire world. And honestly, Alessandra, with her extreme political prowess, um, is probably gonna help him do that and I fear for their world. I really do. That's very sad. Yeah, that was the shadows between us I can't even do it justice like literally I was laughing so loud Um, when, like once I finally finished it I was in a cafe and as I was walking home. I had so many thoughts that I literally opened my phone and I like had a conversation with myself walking home just to get all of my thoughts out um so that I could talk to you guys about it. So thank you for being here. I, I would love to hear your thoughts about it because definitely there were people in the comments that told me to read it and I'm not mad. It was a trip. It was, it was honestly, I was feeling a reading block coming on. Um, reading block, a reading slump, Carrie, are you okay? Um, I was feeling a reading slump coming on and this honestly kicked me out of it because it was just so fluff. I would say. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. I'm sorry that this was a mess. I genuinely tried to structure it beforehand and then I realized that there was just no way that I could structure it at all. So <laughs> this was just word vomit and I'm, I hope that you stayed till the end. So if you made it, thank you. And um, I will see you guys next time. What a funny, just what a funny book. Also the waiting list. I waited for this on hold for a very long time. Um, so if you really want to read it, go to your library right now and put it on hold because it's flying off the shelves. But anyway, that was The Shadows Between Us. Thank you for joining me. And um, let me know what you're reading. Let me know what I should be reading next because I am, I'm actually rereading things right now. Um, I don't have anything new to really start. So let me know what I should be reading. And I will also see you very soon to talk about The Shadow and Bone TV show. I'm so excited. I'm, I don't know if I should binge it or if I should pace myself. I don't think I will be able to pace myself, but we'll see. So you will definitely be hearing me talk about that. And um, yeah. Okay. So I will see you guys later. Thank you always. Bye.